you wanted rat boys, so today you're getting rat boys. Rat Lord Dietz always provides for his little ratlings. Welcome back to another episode of Anvil of Doom Miniatures, the channel where I paint up nothing but the classics and hopefully it gives you a bit of nostalgia and inspires you to paint those miniatures you forgot about. Now creating videos and content is no easy task and I get a lot of people asking me week after week to paint this and paint that. So a few weeks ago, I put up a poll asking what you guys wanted me to paint and boy oh boy did the rats come out. Skaven won the poll, followed by Empire, so today I'm going to paint up a classic Skaven miniature for you guys. But do not stress all my Empire simps out there, in a few weeks time I do have a video coming for you guys. The next batch paint will be an Empire batch paint, so get ready for that one. Now I did spend a few weeks trying to find the perfect Skaven miniature and I stumbled across this guy, this 4th edition Skaven Screaming Bell. And to get it like this, still wrapped in its plastic and in amazing condition, is a real treat. And when I do get miniatures like this, I do get nervous about ripping open the plastic and taking them out, but these things are meant to be played with and they're meant to be painted. The main thing I can do is paint them to the best of my ability and give it the justice it deserves. Before I get into it, a few years ago I had two pet rats, Walnut and Olive, so I want to dedicate this episode of Anvil of Doom Miniatures to those two. Let's get straight into it. As I said, this box is still wrapped up in its original plastic, so it's a real treat for us to get to open this up together. And I'm glad to have you here to open up this classic mini with me. Nothing beats the feeling of sliding out that old foam tray and getting to look through the old instructions and the GW pamphlet from the 90s. It comes with all the parts to build a screaming bell, a beautifully sculpted grey seer, and a completely badass bell ringer. One thing that surprised me with this mini is that there weren't as many harsh mold lines than there usually is from kits from this era. So I'm pretty happy about that because you know mold lines and me just do not mix. So to paint this mini properly and to get to all the hard to reach places, I'll need to compartmentalize it and only build things like the bell. Now I really recommend painting like this with your bigger models because you will get a better result in the end. But then again, if you're not too fussed, paint however you like. One thing I've realized recently is that everyone does things differently and everyone paints differently and there's no correct way to do it. A little bit of wire and blue tack or poster putty is the real MVP when doing this and I just use old containers as handles. I glue the bell parts together and then use green stuff to seal the little crack on the side of the bell. And I'm not going to lie, but I kind of botched this a little bit. I rolled the green stuff into a skinny little sausage and pressed it into the gap and then just smoothed it over with a sculpting tool on my fingers. I waited about a day for the green stuff to dry and when that was dry, I hit it with a black prime. Now this model is easily the biggest and most detailed miniature I've painted to date. So I want to cut some corners so I don't spend eternity on it. So what I'm going to do today is do a technique which people have been screaming down in the comments for me to do for a long time and that is dry brushing. Now for my base coat, I'm going to go over all the timber areas with dried bark. Two thin coats of this does the trick. Then using an old brush, I do my first dry brush with Doombull Brown all over these timber textures. I then go over this again with some Vallejo BC Brown and I make sure I get all the hard corners of this to make it look like it's had an edge highlight. This took me a couple of hours to complete and I've got to say I'm pretty chuffed with the result. So from now on, I definitely will be doing more dry brushing. So thanks to everyone who put that down in the comments, you win. Time for the base coats. So I throw on my light brown on the pelt and the ropes of the model. I use Zandri dust for this. As it's not too dark and not too light, it acts as a great mid-tone. Just like the box art, I'm going for some green warp stone like rat heads. So I apply some watered down dark green to all of these areas. Next is a nice coat of corn red to all the horns, claws and skaven symbols that litter this model. Time for some true metallic metal and this was the most time consuming part of painting this thing. There are so many metal bits and pieces on the bell. I went over super carefully with my gun metal to each bolt, spike, hook and handle. I'm going to try a different type of gold today as I'm not after the vibrancy I tend to lean towards with my other models. I want it to be a bit more dull and washed out and feel like the bell is being wheeled out of a sewer or something like that. I use Liberator Gold for a base and put this down on the larger bell, the smaller bells and the warpstone holder. When I first put the gold down, I thought this was a bit of a mess, but after a second coat, I was pretty happy with it. I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit nervous about the color selection of the bell, but when in doubt, it's worth going with the box art. It just makes life a bit easier. Old school Skaven were painted way more bright than the Skaven you see today. So I'm gonna make sure this bell is very 90s and bright. So I use Teclas Blue as a base for some of the details in the bell. And then some more dark green to the stone and the large rat head. And just like before, I use some corn red to the horns and the little symbols. 
It's time to get these washers started, so I watered down some black and applied this all over the gun metal, letting it pull in each bolt and in the recesses. I just didn't feel like using none oil today, and I find that I can adjust the darkness of this wash just by adding more black to it. Agrax Earthshade goes all over the Xandri dust, and I just use this straight out of the pot, I don't water this down at all. Like usual, I use Gullum and Flesh Wash all over the Liberator Gold, making sure it pulls in all the recesses. Now part of me thinks that I might have gone a bit too hard with this, and I could have used a wash that was less intense, but painting is always trial and error, and I feel like I learn something new with every mini I paint, and it's all about that growth as a painter. And to finish up all the washes, I give the blue bits a wash with some severely watered down ultramarine blue. Now I do get asked from time to time how long miniatures take me to paint, and up to this point I timed it, this guy took me 16 hours. This thing was deceptive, I don't know why it took me this long, maybe I'm a bit slow. I did think I'd be able to push through this thing a bit quicker, but yeah, anyway, I feel like if you were painting this thing in the 90s, it would have been a nightmare with the paints they had, so if you did, my hat is off to you. Next I bust out the dry brush again, and I just go back over the pelt with Xandri dust and a bone white mix. I also use this mix for the ropes on the model. Time for some highlights, and I wanted these reds to pop like the box art, so I carefully went over each symbol, claw, and horn with some Evil Sun Scarlet. I then busted out the Wild Rider Red and highlighted again, but to less of an area, and focused on putting these highlights towards the top parts or where I thought light would be catching. And to finish up, I used a highlight of orange flare to the tips of the red. This final highlight always gives me that classic old hammer feeling. Some people like their highlights to be super blended, but for me, I think those final bright lines make the model very readable. I'm not really going for something lifelike, I just wanted this mini to be fun and to catch your eye. To get the warp stone glowing green I was after, I mixed in one part dark green to one part war boss green and went over the raised areas. I wasn't too fussed if these painted lines were large because they blended in with the background green base coat just fine. I then applied pure war boss green to the same areas but covered less, and to finish, using a really skinny brush, I put down some moot green towards the edges just to give it that glowing look. For the blues, I went back over the techless blue to clean up but made sure I didn't go over any of the recesses as I wanted to keep them dark just to have that contrast. I then used a thick line of lotham blue, and to finish, I used some thin highlights of blue horror just to the upward facing areas. And if you see my previous videos, you're probably very familiar with how I do true metallic metal, so I'll quickly go over it. I glaze on gun metal, making sure I don't go over the recesses. Once I'm happy with that, I use silver as a highlight to all the edges, and I also apply this to any bolts just to make them pop a little bit more. So painting large flat surfaces has always been a pain for me, and this one is gold, so I was going to be in a world of pain when I'm painting this bell. I went back over with my Liberator Gold, just glazing it over sections where I thought it needed some shine. I also use this as an edge highlight to some of the areas, as I like how the Gullum and Flesh Wash made it look a bit grimy and dark. To finish, I mixed in one part Liberator Gold and one part Silver, and I just use that as a final edge highlight, anywhere it needs it. So after that was done, it's time to build this sucker, and as I was building, I realised something. I forgot to paint two wheels, I only painted four, and boy oh boy, I was screaming like a hungry rat on the inside, I was so pissed off, I couldn't believe it. So yeah, for the next hour after doing this, I had to paint two more wheels. But anyway, it's time for the fun part, and the part that you're all here for, it's time to paint some rats. So I wanted to start off with the bell ringer first, and as I said before, I wanted these rats to pop. So I gave him a nice purple robe, I mixed in three parts jean stealer purple to one part royal purple, and just applied this all over. I then slapped on some more techless blue to the hood. Now I always want my miniatures to be tied together, so I feel like it's important to sometimes keep the colours similar. If you paint a metal part blue and then some cloth the same blue, it isn't going to look too weird, your brain really won't see it that way. So to make this rat look like my old rat olive, I used dried bark as the base for the fur. I then used rat skin flesh to the hands, face, feet and the little tail. This colour has been sitting in the bottom of my paint bin, so I'm really happy to finally use it. And I'm going to use the same base colours and techniques I did for the bell on the green warpstone, the red symbols, any light brown or bone colours, the golds, and finally the silvers. It's time to wash this dirty little rat, and I use a heavily watered down wash of Magos Purple for the robes, and some ultramarine wash that's heavily watered down as well, just for the hood. I also make sure that some of this pulls around the Skaven symbol on the head. 
Then I use Gulliver Flesh Wash all over the rat skin, making sure it pulls in all the recesses. And for that big old rat skull on the stick, I hit it with a watered down coat of Skeleton Horde. For the rope, I just use some Agrax Earthshade. This will differentiate the two light brown colors. Now let's make this purple pop, and I use Gene Stealer Purple for the first highlight. And then I mix in small amounts of white to build up these highlights as I go. This model has some great raised folded areas, so seeing where the highlights needed to go was super easy. And I did the same technique with the hood, but used Lotham Blue and mixed in small amounts of Blue Horror until I was happy. I always like to finish up my blues with that striking Blue Horror highlight, because I feel like it really catches your eye. As this guy is hidden behind the bell, he'll need some help standing out, so these colours should do the trick. Now for the skin, and I go back over the Gullum and Flesh Wash areas with Rat Skin Flesh first. And then I slowly mix in Pallid Witch Flesh to the Rat Skin Flesh and just build up that highlight. I keep mixing this in until I'm happy with the skin tone. For the brown fur, I use a stippling technique with Doombull Brown and then a final stipple of Scrag Brown over the top of this. And I use this to kind of shape the muscles on the arms. So the bell ringer is done and it's time to tackle the grey seer and we are well and truly on the home straight. I will go over this guy pretty quickly because a lot of the techniques that I did I've already done on the previous models. So let's keep it quick and get to that sweet sweet reveal. Now as this rat boy is a grey seer, he's going to have to have a grey cloak. So I use Administratum Grey and mix in a tiny amount of black to it and just apply this all over. I do this to give my grey a little bit more of a range. I don't want it to look too light or white or bright. And just like on the previous minis, I threw on some layers of red, blue, and green to match up with the rest of the model. Now I needed two tones of grey for this guy because I didn't want the cloak and the fur to clash too much. So I'm going to use Fenris Grey just for the fur. I applied that all over his little head and his arms. And just like the other rat boy, I use a coat of rat skin flesh over the skin sections, Xandru dust over the ropes and skulls, some gunmetal over the dagger, and Liberator Gold over his little bangles. I used the same washes as before all over these areas to make sure it was tied together nicely. Now back onto that grey cloak, and I used pure Administratum Grey as my first highlight. As I mixed in a little bit of black to the base coat, it means I can just use this as my first highlight for those raised areas. Once I'm happy with that, I start mixing in small amounts of white, and I apply that to all the folds. I find grey to be an extremely hard colour to paint as sometimes it can look really messy and sometimes it's hard to see if the highlights are working. I recommend you just take your time with this and if it looks like shit, just start over. And just like the bell ringer, I highlight the skin using rat skin flesh and mix in some pallid witch flesh. I did give this grey seer a little bit lighter of a skin tone and I just added more pallid witch flesh into this. I wanted them to look a little bit different. Now I won't go over the reds again, but it was important for me to make this guy look like the box art, so I gave him that bright red treatment to the hood. And for the fur, I just mixed in white to the Fenris Grey and did some stippling to build up the highlights. And finally, I want to make this dagger look pretty cool as it's front and center on the mini, so I gave it a wash of Griff Charger Grey, and this color has a really nice green tone to it, so it's going to mix in with a warp stone theme. And then I highlighted the runes of the dagger with the same reds I did before. And that's pretty much it my dudes. I did go back over and fix a few little things up, but anyway, here it is. Here is my Skaven Screaming Bell. Thanks for sticking around to the end. This thing was a monster effort to paint and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I've got some really cool things coming up on the channel soon, so make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.